All right, everyone, welcome back to another Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes video with Fat Phil, and we are going to talk about the Leviathan requirements that dropped. Uh, I want to give you guys my honest opinion for every single requirement. We'll go through what I think the impact this will have later on in the game, and then we'll kind of just, you know, see what you guys think. Again, I'm fully prepared to get destroyed in the comments for what I say because I think a lot of people never like when I really don't have a problem with these wrecks. I'm going to tell you right now that I think they are tough, but they are fair. So let's dive right into our list. Let's go here. All right. So the first two requirements, you need Darth Revan and Darth Malak to Relic 9. This is a step up from Profundity where it was a Relic 8 and a Relic 9. So again, that's, that's kind of okay. It, of the characters they could have picked for us to Relic 9. I'm glad it was Darth Revan who's going to be the pilot for this capital ship. I was actually very nervous that they would just exclude him from requirements because they know that we'll want to have capital ship at Relic 9 anyway. So, you know, thank you, CG. Hat off to you for, you know, being nice and giving us a decent Relic 9 requirement in Darth Revan. And then Malak, although he's not going to be part of the fleet, he's an integral part of any Sith Empire team. So Relic 9 on him, he's a tank. He's going to gain a ton of stuff. Just look at the stats he'll gain. He's going to gain an extra... 30,000 health and protection, which all gets lumped into one from going from Relic 8 to Relic 9. So he's going to be a force to be reckoned with for sure. I'm very excited for that. I think, again, thank you, CG, for making two characters that are very, very good that you're going to use all the time, Relic 9 requirements. Uh, I really appreciate, from the bottom of my heart, I do appreciate that. Okay, so the next requirement here, Darth Malgus is not a Relic requirement, but you need him anyway and his Sith Fury class interceptor ship, right? So you need that Fury class interceptor as well. Um, again, look, I get it. If you're not 4 million galactic power, you can't even scratch at these things without spending a significant amount of money. But that's their intention. This ship is not designed for early game players. This fleet is not designed for early. This is a very late end game kind of update. So I don't think that you're going to be in a brand new fleet arena shard and seeing leviathans like i just i don't think that's going to be a possibility so i'm not bothered by that right i think the darth malagus you know not being a relic requirement i'm not shocked by it a lot of us already have them at high relic levels so like they're not going to you know look they're not going to give you that benefit oops i hit the mic there uh they're not going to give you that benefit so yeah why is our king here right wampa's finally relic eight why is he here because i want you guys to learn from take a lesson from this, learn from the like mistake. So yes, look, I told you guys I'd take Wampa to Relicate when we hit 5k. We had our celebration. We took him to Relicate. And then literally the next day they released the Leviathan requirements and I am way behind. And a lot, a lot of that has to do with taking Wampa to Relicate. Now I'm a man of the people. I'm a man of my word. I said I would do it, but I want you guys to take a lesson from this that yes, Relicate looks super cool, right? You know, it's fun to do relicates like, oh yeah, you know, Phil, like, oh, you should, you know, you should have done relic nine on him. Like, you know, now you guys understand why I always tell you, you don't need to do stuff like this is because now I'm so much farther away from getting these, you know, getting this ship because I invested resources in something that I didn't really need to invest in. Now, again, Wampa is king and 5k subscriber. The goal was to get Wampa to relic eight and I did it. So, you know, there's not regret there. I just want, like, not regret in the sense of, like, I wouldn't have had these wrecks come out. I might have tried to delay the Wampa Relicator as long as I could, if I'm completely honest with you guys. But that's just because that's the kind of guy I am. So, um, you know, learn from my mistake. Like, mistake, right? Learn learn a lesson from this that just because you're going to get a character to relegate doesn't always mean that that's the smartest thing for your future down the road. So, there's that. All right, Shorty, we're going to need it Relic 5, and I so called it. I told you guys that they were going to make Shorty a requirement. The player data so showed that Shorty was under Relic, under geared. So get to farming Shorty if you haven't been listening to the smartest, wisest, you know, in a completely unbiased sense, content creator that is obviously me. Um, unbiased, of course. Uh, no, you know what? I'm not, I don't have a problem with Shorty. I think that it, like, they created that character for this game so there was no way they're going to create a character for this game and not make them important down the road so i think this is a lesson to everybody similar like the inquisitors similar to other stuff like they made shorty this important character in terms of conquest making all these feats about shorty well now you need it so you know 
get to work on shorty if you haven't already. I so called it. I warned you all. You better have listened. All right, HK47. I was mentally prepared to have to relic this character. I'm not happy about it, but I was mentally prepared to do it. Relic 7 requirement, which is a bit steep. It's a lot of Relic 7s. It's a lot of Relic levels for this. But it is what it is, right? I don't think that I... I don't think it's unfair, right? Like, a lot of people have this character at Relics already, so it's not that big of a deal. Really, it's not hard to even get him to Relics. It's just the Relic 7 is a lot, but again... You could use him with Shorty. You can use him with Afra. Like, there's ways to use this character, especially, like, later on in the game. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. I was mentally prepared. All right, Sith Assassin and her ship, Sith Fighter. You know, get your Drake out, right? You know, the motto, right? You already know, though. Um, I can't say the rest of that song because, well, I'll get more than just demonetized. I'll probably get canceled and, you know, everything else. Um... You know, you guys can let me know if you know the lyrics, the rest of the lyrics there. But uh, no, Sith Assassin, um, it's awesome, right? I like, they told us this was going to happen. It's only Relic 5, which is great. Like, thank you, CG. Hat off. In terms of the characters, we have to take, like, Relic 5 on Sith Assassin, not that bad, right? Um, I don't have a, I don't have an issue with this. I think it's fine, right? They, they warned us that this was going to happen. Bastila Sean, this one kind of came out of left field a little bit, right? They always throw in some curveballs. And this Bastila Sean being Relic 7, right? Like, I finally have an excuse to get her to Relic levels. Am I happy about Relic 7? No. But I took her to Relic 5. It's what I had available to me between all my signal data stuff uh, before GAC lock-in. So we will have her for that. Um, look, I don't really... I don't mind this. I finally have an excuse. I'll be able to use her in the raid. Same with Shorty, right? I'll be able to use Shorty in that raid. Um, I guess where I'm looking at this right now is that, you know, they need to have some stuff in there that's kind of, you know, out of left field, doesn't quite fit in, and Basila Sean is that for this. You know, just go do it. A lot of people have her at Relics anyway, so this isn't that big of a deal to me. Sith Trooper to Relic 7 and the TIE Dagger. We knew about TIE Dagger, right? We knew that was going to be a requirement. Sith Trooper to Relic 7, you know, it could be better, it could be worse. He's good with Kylo, right? That's kind of his, his niche. Um, if his ship is going to play an integral role, you'll want him at High Relics anyway. I just would prefer, like, I would have preferred Dark Basti to Relic 7 or something. I don't know. Um, like, it could be better, it could be worse. I'll be able to use him in Rise of the Empire territory battles for a much longer period of time now, which is always a good thing. Um, so I'm not too bothered right it's i kind of have no harsh or good opinion on it right it is what it is right it's fine sith empire trooper is the next ship right that's the title card there he just got his ship he needs to be relic seven again another relic seven right um but he's fantastic he's a great tank you can use him with darth treya you can use him with you know darth revan like there's so many ways to use that character um so i really don't have a like i'm pretty pumped about it like he's a great meat shield i'm excited his ship looks really really cool so like we we got the leviathan requirements right you like galactic chase incoming we don't know when the galactic chase will start but you know you're going to need it at seven stars so just be prepared for it get it do what you need to do all right darth maul so the scimitar we need to get that to seven star that's not hard you should have that because it's easy 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 to get to seven stars um the pain aspect here is that Darth Maul is a Relic 4 requirement for Sith Eternal. So, you know, if you don't have Sith Eternal and you're going to get this ship, well, you're, you know, even closer to Sith Eternal. The the reason it's pain is because you just, you really don't use Darth Maul right now. Um, he's in need of a, he's in dire need of a rework. Um, just needs something. And, you know, Relic 7, I mean, fine. I don't know what kind of role he will play in this fleet, but, you know, it's fine. It's going to bloat your GP, but pain like I just I don't use him except when I need to get stealth feats and even then I'm just using him for his lead I'm not actually like getting any good use out of him so uh, whatever all right the ebon hawk to seven stars I think a lot of people are going to be between shorty and the ebon hawk I think those are the two requirements that most people are going to get you know screwed on um the thing is I kind of saw this coming right I like it makes sense it's a ship that I think moving to the cantina definitely hurt how many people have it because it takes away from your signal data. It takes away from everything else. Um, but look, 
you if you are a late game player, you have no excuse to not have this ship. It's a requirement for the Radis anyway. So I just I don't see why people don't have this ship. It's something that you need to do, right? That this isn't like the Sith fighter where I can understand where people didn't farm it because it's literally not needed for anything. This at least was a requirement to get the Radis, right, for Holdo's ship. So um I don't have a big problem here. I, you know, I don't think that's, you know, they're not asking for car 33 at relic levels. You just need to have the Ebon Hawk at seven star, which it is what it is, guys, right? You just, you have to do it. I kind of saw it coming. I don't know if I was quite as convinced, but I would, I said, I think I said I wouldn't be as surprised if they did that. And then a Sith Marauder, you need the B-28 extinction class bomber. That's not that hard, right? That's a very easy, easy ship to have had because it's good, right? It's a good ship. You should have already had it. Sith Marauder is a Sith Eternal requirement, so for a lot of players who are preparing for this Leviathan, we probably already have Sith Eternal, so you have Sith Marauder at Relic 7. So you, But you should have his ship, because his ship is really good. And, you know, if we kind of round back to why I'm kind of more, like, fine with this, even though it's, like, a lot, and I'll show you guys the Relic situation that I'm in personally, even with where I what I've done, um, this ship is not designed for newer players to be able to get like you're not going to be in a new shard and seeing leviathan dominating your fleet arena because of this right here not just the failure class interceptor but malgus himself unless you are like have, you know crazy crazy focused on darth malgus you cannot obtain him below four million galactic power unless you're spending crystals all this stuff right but then the fury class interceptor is going to be in the same boat that you're not going to you're going to have to completely focus on this ship to then get Darth Malgus and it, and then all the other stuff, right? Like, there's just, I don't think a lot of people below 4 million will have any capacity to get this for a very long time. And that's okay. I don't think that this was designed to be like the executor or even profundity where you could get this early. They're designing this to be later game. I think it's going to dominate, right? I 1,000% think it's going to dominate. Um... I don't even know, you know, what the Leviathan fleet will end up doing, but it's it's scary, guys, right? I don't, I'm, I think these, you know, as I say, I think these requirements are tough, but I think they are fair. So what I'd like to do is I'm going to switch my screen over to my GG account here. So you guys can see my GG account now. Um, so what I'd like to do is just show you where I'm at. So plenty of, you know, uh, carbonate circuit boards, chrome transistors, heat, you know. The, then where I start running into problems is the heat sinks, electrum conductors, the uh, impulse detectors, zimital cards, and the GERDA keypads, right? Um, I think the scariest part of that for me is the zimital cards and the GERDA keypads. Impulse detectors, we'll be able to get those, right? We'll, I have a plan in place. I'll be able to get that done. The GERDA keypads, it's going to cost me about 10,000 crystals if I want to just buy them from shipments, which would be a lot. So what my thought process there is if I just focus on the relics right now, right? I'm going to switch my screen back over to the game, right? So um, current state of things, right? I mean, I need a lot of stuff, right? Zimital cards. I need this gear, but we'll have a plan. Impulse detectors, we're going to use my raid currency for that. And then Gerda keypads here. I can trade in, if I can use some of my gear that I've saved up here, right? Just as an example, I'm not going to use all of this stuff, right? I'll need to use some of it. But if I trade in the gear that I've accumulated over time, I'm going to be able to get a very keypad. This is going to save me right here 5,000 crystals by being able to just scrap this gear. I'll save 5,000 crystals, which is huge, right? That's, that's, that's a ton of stuff. Because what I'm going to need that for, if we go back right, is signal data. This is where I think I'm going to struggle, if you guys can see the signal data here, right? Gear-wise, I'm not concerned. I have gear saved up, right? I've got gear ready for shorty. So it's the signal data. I'm in a dire, dire situation with signal data. So let me show you guys that. Um, if we go here, right, I've only got 73 here. I do have 140 there. And then I've got about 80, or I got 90 here. So we need a lot of signal data still. And that's where I think I'm going to struggle is the signal data. Now, all that said, what we can do is, you know, and here's where I think I'm going to be planning for myself, right? So if you guys are still watching, make sure you're subscribed, right? Because like you're watching already. So 
what I think we're going to do, and I'll make a separate video talking about this, but my Mark III currency here, right, this stuff, I get 1,250 of it between my personal track and the guild track. I'm going to be spending it on impulse detectors because impulse detectors, right, you do the math here, it's 265 Mark III currency per piece, right? Whereas Gerda keypads, it is 585 Mark III, right? It's over double the cost for a Gerda keypad as it is for an impulse detector. And you compare that to their crystal cost, right? If we go down, we're gonna, we're gonna keep scrolling down here until we find it. Come on, I know you're down here somewhere. Come on, come on, we're getting there. Gotta get through all this stuff, let's go. Here we go. So a impulse detector, right? You're looking at, you know, 180 crystals per piece. And Gerda keypads, you're looking at 250 crystals per piece. So with the raid, right, with our Mark III currency, you're looking at a over two to one ratio of, you know, for every two, I'm getting more than two impulse detectors per Gerda keypad. Compare that to the crystals where it's, you know, about, what, 70 crystals, it's about 25% more for a Gerda keypad than a impulse detector. So from a resource efficiency standpoint, you're gonna be saving more Mark III currency by using them for impulse detectors and using crystals for your Gerda keypads. Now, as I said, it's 5,000 crystals, right? Because you can buy only 10 at a time for 250 here. So I'm gonna to need to spend 5,000 crystals to get 20 of these. And then I need to get 40 of them, right? Because I need two Relic Nines, so that's 10,000. So that's why I said in the scavenger here, I can save myself 5,000 crystals by scrapping this kind of gear. And because this is a fleet galactic chase, all I'm gonna be using is buying this stuff here, right? These are the things that I will be going for. This stuff, this is what I'll be using my fleet currency for to be able to earn Gerda keypads for this event. So all that said, I think month two is going to be the goal. That's still going to be a huge stretch for me, but I think it'll be, you know, I don't know if it, I don't know if it'll be possible. It'll be really tough on signal data, but we're gonna see what we can do with the crystals that we're gonna have to spend and everything. Um, but guys, at the end of the day, like I don't have a big problem with these requirements. I really don't. I think that they're fine. I think they're tough. I think they're fair. But they, you know, they're like I, they didn't really do anything here. That's, you know, like all the characters that they're requiring are good in some aspect, whether they're going to be part of this fleet or Bastila and Shorty, who are great for the raid. They're good characters. Like, I, there's nothing in here that's like horrible, horrible, horrible. So. Thank you, CG. Like, this isn't that bad. I don't want you guys to think that I don't think this is a lot. It's just, it's not designed for you at 2 million, 3 million, or even 4 million galactic power. This is a very late game thing, and that's okay, right? I think everybody so wants, like, the new content to be for everyone, and that doesn't make any sense. That there needs to be things to shoot for in the future, or else this game gets boring, right? I don't know. Those are my thoughts. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. As always, smash that subscribe button, leave likes and leave comments, and I'll see you on the next video. Cheers.